Welcome, in front of me is a Sony Xperia 5 Mark V and today I will show you a couple tweaks and the tricks you can do on this device. So, starting off I'm going to begin by opening up settings and then navigating into the display section where we'll have a couple different things I'm going to showcase. So starting off we have the image quality. This allows you to just select kind of like the saturation of the display. Uh, interesting thing in here is that we do have creator mode which is apparently a more color accurate uh, representation and the way they're kind of going about it is basically the faithful representation of what the creators of whatever you'll be watching has intended that content to, to look like. Now, if I remember correctly, it does become a little bit less saturated. So obviously, if you're a fan of like super colorful colors, this might not be for you. I personally do like it. It's a little bit more uh, obviously realistic and more toned down. So that fits what, what I'm looking for. Now, we also have the real time HDR uh, drive. So uh, what it does is each frame of HDR content will be optimized for visual uh, for visibility. Not visual and uh, according to your viewer viewing environment so this uses the uh, sensor that you have somewhere i believe like right here and it works very similarly to how this plays for instance shift the uh, blue and like reddish tones so for instance when you're outside it will change it and for instance if you like indoor with the normal you know a light bulb lighting it might change the colors of the display. It's something that you don't really notice because it works well. And this basically up, well, tries to do the same thing, but with HDR. Anyway, moving on to the next thing, is the white balance. So just more control over your colors. Uh, though this is turned off by default, but you can obviously turn it on and change it to fit your needs. You also have uh, custom right here, so you can control uh, RGB colors and uh, I Okay, so this is a preset basically. So you can set up whatever you want. Now, this section is not really for me. This is more for like creators. Uh, this device obviously, uh, if I'm correct, allows you to use this phone as a viewfinder for your camera. So you might want to actually have control over things like that. Might be very important to you. So we can customize this to fit. Uh, the image that you're looking for. Obviously, you can use that no matter what. It still affects the device altogether. So, if you want to change just some minute settings in here, go right ahead. Now, moving on to the next option, it's the refresh rate right here. Uh, so, we have the use high refresh rate, which by default is off. So, I'm going to turn it on. And now we have this nice buttery smooth animation. Uh, now, that being said, high refresh rate is nice and all. It will consume a little bit more of your phone's battery. So if you want to prioritize battery life only, you might want to keep that off. I personally do like the high refresh rate, so that's what I'm going to stick with. Now moving a little bit further down, we have the dark theme. Just a simple dark mode. When you enable it, it enables it, obviously. Everything turns dark but we do have additional option in here so if you tap on the text itself it gives you the option for schedule and in here you can select it to be on a, a custom timer or from sunset to sunrise and what this will allow you to do is just have the device switch between these two modes a light and the dark based on the time of day so as an example during the night time the device will switch to night mode or dark mode and that will basically give you the benefit of not being flashbanged by your own device during night and when it comes down to the daytime, it will switch back to light mode, giving you the better viewing uh, viewing of the display, uh, especially when it's like super bright outside. Uh, then light mode is, I believe, a little bit easier to see compared to the dark mode. Now, uh, moving on into the last thing that I wanted to show you, it's the side sense, as they're calling it, or just simply saying sidebar. Probably would have been much better and more uh, like logical. It is a side on the side and is a bar sense doesn't really what the hell is a sense i'm not sensing these apps i'm interacting with them from a bar but whatever uh, anyway so here we have two different things we have the pop-up versions and then you have a second tab for 21 by 9 which is the aspect ratio of this device uh split screen applications and you can select 
any kind of applications. The device does come with a couple pairs already created. So we have things like uh, App Store or Play Store and the browser, then oops, same thing, but just reversed. Um, and what was the other one? Come on, there we go. And the last one was YouTube and browser. So these come basically baked into the device. But if you want to create your own app pairs, which you can totally do, it's a little bit more convoluted. Uh, it should have been a nice, easy, for instance, had created two different split screens. So as an example, if I do something like this, right? Oops. Oh, for goodness sake. Okay, so I have two of them right now. So what would have been a better alternative, I would say, would be things like going to recent and I don't know, having a plus button here or somewhere here to add it into SideSense. But instead, we are forced to do this a stupid thing where we basically interact with this. Then we go to the settings right here, scroll down, go to uh, SideSense Mini, actually not this one, this one, multi-window mini, and then pairing settings, add a pair, and then you have the two different ones, so you have upper and lower, because you do have to pick which one will go where. So let's just say I'm gonna do something that wasn't there. Let's go with files as one, and second one, let's make it uh, opera, whatever, good enough. And now when, my, when I save it, I have a new app pair, which should be visible somewhere here. Now, where is it? It's a better question. Just, like close out of this. Oh, there we go. It's right at the front. So it looks like additionally, we are limited to only three of them because the other one that was visible right here did disappear. But as you can see, I can click on it and now it will open up the two different apps that I have uh, paired up together and I can quickly interact with them. Additionally, uh, if you want to swap it around, you can do so quickly by tapping on this bar right here. And instead of swapping it, it come on. So never mind, we can't really swap it. It's not the, uh, not the best implementation, I'll be honest. Uh, so I was expecting this to be kind of like a swap, uh, these flip it around, uh, but it's not, unfortunately. But still, you can create uh, app pairs right here, giving you a bit of a more versatility to your device. Uh, hopefully, Sony will improve on this. Uh, other, other manufacturers like Samsung did catch up with this because I believe Sony was the first one to implement this kind of thing with the app pairs. But to be completely honest, Samsung is now doing it significantly better, giving you way more options associated with uh, with multitasking. But anyway, with that being said, hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.